Okay, friends, this is our last section of the math review. Woo! Okay, so the last section deals with vectors and scalars. So I am not expecting you to be an expert on vectors and scalars by the end of this lesson, okay? Um, I am more trying to get your brain primed because we're gonna keep running into these concepts as we go through the physics curriculum. Overall, a vector is something that has magnitude and direction. And by magnitude, I mean it has like a numerical value. A scalar only has magnitude. So I'm going to make a little chart and we're going to go over some examples that hopefully make a little bit more sense. So scalar only has magnitude. An example of this is temperature. For example, think of how hot it is right now outside, right? Whatever, maybe it's like 85 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just a magnitude. This is just a numerical value that tells us how big or how small this temperature is, right? But it doesn't have a direction. We're not saying, ah, yes, 85 degrees northbound. No, it's just 85 degrees. Okay, let's look at another example of a scalar. This calculator in my hands, it has a certain mass. Let's say, just gonna make, make a guesstimate here. Let's say that my calculator has a mass of one kilogram. Mass is a scalar. So I gave the example of one kilogram, right? It's just a value that tells us something about the bigness or smallness of that certain measurement, right? So temperature, mass. What about I have two cups of water in this container? So volume, what do you think volume is? This is also a scalar, right? So let's just say two liters, right? Again, there's no directionality as associated with it. Like, I don't care. I don't care if this thing, you know, magically is floating across the room. It still has a certain amount of volume. <laughs> what about if you are riding your skateboard 10 miles per hour? I don't know how fast skateboards can go. <laughs> 10 miles per hour northeast vector or scalar a skateboarder going 10 miles per hour northeast that is a vector so person going 10 miles per hour northeast there is a magnitude so 10 miles per hour that tells me how fast they're going but I also have a directionality component to it. So that is a vector. Okay, what if I just said a person going 10 miles per hour? What if I only gave you that much information? That is a scalar, person going 10 miles per hour. Because I only have a magnitude, no direction. Okay, what about, what about if I just tell you that I am one meter tall? <laughs> Scalar or a vector, one meter tall. The unit of length is a scalar. So again, like one meter. Doesn't tell me direction, doesn't tell me if I'm, south, east, north, whatever. I'm just 
one meter. <laughs> okay, final example. Vector versus scalar. What about if a football player is chasing you? Hmm. Is there a speed associated with the football player, you think? Does directionality matter? Hmm. hmm, let's draw this out. Let's draw this out. So, here you are. It's you. And then, like, a big, big football player <laughs> starts running after you. So they're going 20 miles an hour. Oh, no. Oh, no. The directionality matters, right? Like, if he's running at you, oh boy, you better run faster. But if he's running away from you, ah, you're safe. So in this case, a football player chasing you is a vector. So you might be looking at this list going like, okay, cool. Why does this matter? Like, why does it matter if we classify something as a vector or a scalar? And my answer to you is that physics is a very, is, physics is very spicy math. And eventually we're gonna get to the point where this distinction does matter in our calculations. Now that we've covered all the basics of your training, it's time for the moment you've been waiting for.